Jimi Hendrix is rightfully considered one of the first and biggest guitar heroes of all time. But what about his rhythm section? Today we're gonna talk about Jimi's bass players, Noel Redding, who played bass on Jimi's first three albums, and Billy Cox, who accompanied him on the last part of his career. Before we go on, let's make a few general considerations about the role of the bass in the music of Jimi Hendrix. The first thing to notice is how loud the bass is in the records. You can hold me down. For a band built around a guitar player, that's pretty remarkable. I don't know if it was originally mixed this way, or if it's been remastered to adapt it to modern standards, but both in the Redding and Cox era, the bass guitar is right in your face. Not only, it wasn't unusual for the time to mix the guitar track on one side and the lead vocal track on the other, the bass, left as the only melodic instrument mixed in the center, acted like the sonic spine of the song. If you listen to Purple Haze through some decent headphones, you'll know what I mean. Finally, from a songwriting standpoint, Jimmy's playing was very abstract. The guitar is not a consistent entity that carries you through the song, but it's more based on phrases coming in and out, alternating with the vocals. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like Jimmy's guitar is kinda snaking through the songs, putting its head out every now and then. On top, Mitch Mitchell's drumming was also very loose and jazz inspired as it was typical of the era. And like his contemporaries such as Ginger Baker or Keith Moon, the drums weren't really keeping a steady and consistent beat based on kick and snare, like we're used to today. The whole picture leaves the bass as the only real timekeeper and consistent element on the majority of the songs. And as a matter of fact, though obviously Jimmy's music is based on guitar and vocals, in these songs it's the glue that keeps them together. So let's begin this double episode taking a look at Noel Redding first. Upon his arrival in England in September 1966, Jimi Hendrix set about finding backing musicians to put the band together. Although Noel Redding had played guitar up to that point, he was so impressed with Jimmy's ability that he decided to switch to bass guitar to get the gig, becoming the second member of the Jimi Hendrix experience. His playing style was in fact that of a guitar player on bass, and it was distinguished by the use of a pick, a mid-range trebly sound, and in later years the use of fuzz and distortion effects through overdriven sound amps. First thing to point out about Noel's playing is his simple but effective use of octaves. Foxy Lady is the best example. Built around the open E and its higher octave, the bass line gives the song its traditional rolling groove. Number two, the Redding Lick, which is a little lick or scale that Noel used literally everywhere. To build the Redding Lick, you start playing the first half of the major scale with an added blue note or augmented fourth. Now shift the whole thing down an octave, except for the first note, the root. This little run is very common in blues music, as a matter of fact it's in pretty much every blues standard and blues exercise out there, so it's not as spectacular. Building up the same scale, starting from the last note, which is the fifth, but this time going up on the regular major scale. If we keep repeating this pattern, alternating the octaves, we're navigating through the fifths. I 
I've always thought that this part of the song sounds very bright and very satisfying. And now I know why. Its ascending pattern follows exactly the circle of fifths, providing a beautiful cascade effect. Keep in mind, these were rock and roll early years. The genre in the mid 60s relied heavily on blues and improvisation, and it was still all about backing up the guitar. Number 3, Root and Flat 7. Beside the little scale we just talked about, there's another figure that seems to happen pretty often in the Jimi Hendrix experience. Number 4, Double the Lead. The Jimi Hendrix experience was the prototype of a power trio, and though most of the time guitar and bass played independent parts, it was also usual to hear them play in unison. At times, even harmonizing. Red House has also a pretty interesting sound, which was recorded by Redding playing the bass strings on a normal six-string guitar. So as you see, it's pretty basic stuff. At times, Redding will get really sophisticated, like on the pseudo jazz videos on If Six Was Nine or Have You Ever Been. But overall, Noel was a solid bass player who could incredibly stay in the pocket and still be all over the place, especially with a complete wild card like Hendrix leading the way. Redding also wrote and sang lead on two songs, Little Miss Strange and She's So Fine. The rest is history. During the recording sessions of Electric Ladyland, Noel was growing more and more unhappy to the point where Jimmy himself had to take care of many of the bass tracks on the album. Noel would leave the band shortly after, and by the time, Jimmy had already relocated in New York and reconnected with his old buddy, an American musician named Billy Cox. Billy and Jimmy had met while serving in the army in the early 60s and had already spent years playing together. As a matter of fact, Cox was Jimmy's first choice when he moved to England, but his friend couldn't make it at the time, so he decided to get an English band instead. With Billy Cox and drummer Mitch Mitchell, Hendrix would start working on his following album that he would never complete. By the time of his death in September 1970 though, a bunch of songs were already recorded and would be released in the following years. So even though it's only one album, there's enough material to have quite a clear idea of Billy's take on Jimmy's music. Billy played with his fingers and according to many, compared to Noel who was a guitar player on bass, was way more skilled and suited to the new music Jimmy was writing. The first thing I've noticed is how on a few occasions he recorded completely different parts for otherwise practically identical verses. Freedom is the best example. Number 2, play pentatonic. The bass line of Freedom is also a good example of Billy's love for the minor pentatonic scale that once again we find pretty often. Isabella has a very interesting F sharp pentatonic figure completely independent from the drums and the bass. Check it out. Number 3, the Cox Box. Yeah, good name. Jimmy had a strong passion for dominant 7th chords. They're everywhere. Try to 
Probably to adapt to this little detail, also Cox developed a similar box that used root, major third, flat seventh, and some passing notes. Number four, the writing box. Yep, do you remember the little blue slick writing like to use? Well, also Billy seems to be quite into it. And like Noel, he likes to double the lead. <laughs> harmonize with it. Number 6, chromatic scales. Compared to Redding, Cox had definitely more dexterity, and his lines, though still based on pentatonic scales, have way more notes in between, often using chromatic scales. <laughs> Besides the music, Cox and Hendrix seem more connected at a personal level. Both Americans, they grew up together and probably share their black music roots, which strongly influenced Jimmy's late work. And Billy seems to genuinely love Jimmy. Plus both of their names end with X. On the other hand, Noel was a more on the road musician and he was perfect for the first rock and blues influenced era of the music of Jimi Hendrix. Billy Cox and Noel Redding seem to be considered like night and day, and most people say Cox is the best of the lot. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I personally don't find such a massive difference between the two. Pretty simple and solid bass players, they both adapted well to Jimmy's eclectic and one-of-a-kind guitar style, which wasn't an easy thing to do. They both left their mark, and recently a town square in Redding's hometown of Folkestone, England, was renamed Noel's Yard as a memorial to him. I'm gonna end this video with a quote from Billy Cox regarding his time with Hendrix. As long as we were playing, we were in a glass ball and we had the protection of the glass ball, which was the spirit of music. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.